Alrighty, so today on Let's Talk Live, we're dishing out tips to beat type 2 diabetes. So with us today is Dr. Neil Barnard and registered dietitian Karen Smith. So guys, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, let's start off with this. Tell us some about your research and what's one of the first things people can do to reduce their risk factor for developing type 2? Because that is, that's when we talk about type 2, that's something you get as you age more or less. That, that's what most people experience is that the risk uh, goes with age and so forth, but we have a completely new view of diabetes that has completely changed because up until now people thought, all right, diabetes means there's too much sugar in the blood, so don't eat sugar and I won't get diabetes. Okay. It really doesn't do it. Okay. Um, a lot of people skip the soda, but they still get diabetes. What researchers have done is they've looked inside the cells of the body with special scanning techniques. And what they find is that the buildup of tiny fat particles, especially inside the muscle cells and liver cells, stops the glucose from getting out of the blood into the cells. So the reason you've got all that sugar in your blood is because it can't get into the cells of your body to power them. And the reason they can't get in is that they're filled with little particles of fat. Wow, so not so much that you just have too much and your insulin can't regulate it, but the fact that it can't get to your cells to more or less feed them and provide them with energy. And that gives us the answer. Instead of just avoiding the soda or having the diet soda and skipping white bread, which doesn't get you very far, you want to get away from the sources of fat, especially what's called saturated fat. Translated, cheese, uh -oh. meat products. As cheese has gone up, diabetes has followed right along with it. And so then people eat the diet soda with the cheese burger and right. they end up with their diabetes. The beauty of this is, you get the bad foods out of your diet, the diabetes can improve. Sometimes it goes away. Really? So it's reversible, more or less? When I was in medical school, I thought it was not possible. Now we see it fairly commonly, that diabetes disappears from a patient's chart. And can you imagine better news than that? That's incredible. So it's because the, the fat around those cells is going away, not so much because your, your body's response to sugar changes. This is not your belly fat or thigh fat. It's fat inside the cells. So Karen and I have been working on making food swaps okay. that allow you to have all the flavor, and none of the bad stuff. All right, well, I'm, I'm skeptical, but let's, uh, let's see, where are we, where are we starting? <laughs> All right, well, here we have a delicious black bean burger. Okay. That's okay. made with only seven ingredients, most of which I bet people have on hand at home. Already. Simple spices. The base is black beans. Okay. Um, and some salsa, some breadcrumbs, and just some few simple spices. Combine those, and you have this delicious, beautiful burger that is saturated fat free free okay and very high in fiber which is a right. very important nutrient that helps fill you up okay. but also reduces risk of type 2 diabetes and helps stabilize blood sugar okay so unlike the <laughs> standard bad, american burger yeah, bad here, examples here but you know you've done a nice job making those not look super appetizing so i appreciate <laughs> that <laughs> but this burger contains zero fiber okay compared to the black bean burger with 20 grams of fiber in wow. just one yeah, burger. That's... And these black beans here are also loaded with vitamin C and potassium, okay. um, other nutrients not found. Black beans, I feel like, are borderline like superfood, if you will. They're like a, they've got a lot, a lot of really good things going on. Yeah, absolutely. Black beans and other legumes, types of beans, lentils, tofu, for example, okay. are all uh, foods that we encourage our patients to eat on a daily basis. Some of it's a little bit of an acquired taste. You know, okay. I never had a black bean burger. Let me try it. Right. But what happens is not only do your taste sort of evolve, but you discover I need less medicine. Right. Not only are their diabetes getting better, but their cholesterol is going down, their weight's going down. And I can't tell you how many high fives we have around the room when people's erectile dysfunction goes away. Really? You heard me right. That's right. <laughs> but, but, and that's, you think, the, just the fiber and just getting rid of some of that extra fat? What, what, what's happening is that in addition to what's happening in the cells, the arteries start reopening. Gotcha. And when you have blood, better blood flow to your heart, right. your heart is healthier. When you have better blood flow to other parts of the anatomy, right. they work better too, if you get my drift. Absolutely. So. Makes, makes good sense to me. So, and now black, so if you're going to make a black bean burger, what, oh, are there tips and tricks to make it a tasty one? I mean, obviously it's not going to be like ground beef, but what, what can you do to, to really add some of the kick? Yeah, uh, well, I'm a working mom. I have okay. three kids, so I find these burgers to be a big hit in okay. our family. With Just the kids, too? That's... With the kids, absolutely. Okay. Especially uh, with the kids. Yeah, yeah they especially. They really love it. They do love uh, black bean or other types of, uh, kind of vegetarian veggie. burgers. And oh, they're super cool. simple because beans are a staple that you can have 
on hand. You don't have to worry about them going right. bad. They're and they're cans pennies. and cans yeah. on them. Yeah. And they cost pennies compared to the price yeah, of meat. Yeah, absolutely. Getting some ground beef or turkey, whatever it would be. Yeah, so, so. just flavoring them with different spices. We use cumin today, a little bit of salt and pepper, but okay. you could certainly, you know, throw in some fresh herbs and spices. Do you need spices. a food processor to do something like that or can you get away with mashing them? We did use a food processor for the burgers you see here today, okay. but you could okay. definitely cool. use a potato masher and really mash the potatoes. Any other foods up here we want to make sure we focus on? Anything in particular? I would offer a tip, if I may. When, yeah. you're, when you're going through the fast food, you know, the choice is everything. If you go to the submarine sandwich place, they'll say, what kind of meat, what kind of cheese? You say, skip the meat and cheese. Just load it up with the lettuce and tomato and cucumbers and spinach and a little red wine vinegar. And it, okay. it's veggie, but it's delicious and it's healthy. Right, and it's still filling. I mean, it's still filling. Or the taco place, skip the meat taco, have the bean burrito, hold the cheese. That's vegan, but who knew? This um, is so interesting because I, I, basically all my life I've always thought, oh, I've been eating way too much sugar. My parents told me when I was growing up, you eat way too much sugar, you got to watch out. So, guys, thank you so much for joining us. This has been really enlightening. Uh, we're going to have more Let's Talk Live coming up right after the break, so stay with us.